Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praises are due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessing be upon His Prophet Muhammad. Welcome to lesson 8 in our book, Ibadati, My Worship. In this class, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go over the conditions of prayer. So we are still talking about the second unit, which is pertinent to prayer. And uh, in this session, we'll go over the conditions required from us to maintain in order for our salah to be acceptable. Of course, uh, the first condition, like in many cases of any act of worship that we do, the person must be a Muslim. So if a person was not a Muslim and he performs prayer, certainly that prayer uh, is not acceptable because he is required to uh, maintain the prerequisite for that prayer, which is to enter into the fold of Islam. Once you become Muslim and you perform prayer, Allah accepts your prayer and he rewards you for it, the exalted he is. Uh, secondly, the person must be sane because uh, the, uh, the insane people are exempted from all acts of worship. Why? Because they don't have the conscious. Uh, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold them accountable for any shortcomings or any acts of mischief whatsoever. Uh, thirdly, the, the, the person must reach the age of uh, discernment. Uh, which is around seven years old. So if a child prays prior to seven years old, his salah is accepted, but he is not required, it's not obligatory upon him to pray at that young age. But it is recommended from his parents to discipline him at an age younger than seven. So once he reaches seven, he is used to praying. And once he reaches seven, his prayer is also acceptable, accepted and Allah rewards him for it. Prior to that, if he prays or makes wudu, he's still young, he's not uh, fully conscious of the act that he does. So uh, his parents may be rewarded for teaching him. But once he reaches seven years old or the age of discernment, uh, this age in which the child can distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. So this is the, the indicator for us to know that this child has reached that age of discernment. So, uh, but when does it become obligatory upon a child once he reaches the age of puberty? Here it is obligatory upon him to perform prayer. But before that, he is required. In fact, the Prophet taught us, peace be upon him, teach your children the salah at seven and beat them up for it at 10. Meaning at 10 years old, if he does not pray, he is to be disciplined for missing prayer on time. Why is that? Because once he reaches the age of puberty, he is well disciplined and he has gone through a time where he has received salah uh, with uh, great reverence. That he now enjoys the salah, he shows glorification to the salah and takes the, the salah seriously in his life. So these three conditions are almost available in so many acts of worship. But there are at, uh, 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 additional six conditions which are related to the prayer itself. So the, the, the first one is being in a state of pu uh, purity, meaning that you must have ablution or you have taken a shower from major state of impurity, for instance, or you have taken a shower with ablution. Uh, if you have taken shower for uh, like to cleanse yourself or so on, you must include also ablution with that. So, if you're going to pray, the first condition you must have ablution. If somebody prays for rakah or prays the entire day without ablution, Allah does not accept his prayer, and is required to repeat these prayers in which he had prayed without ablution. So must maintain ablution for salah to be acceptable. Secondly, ensuring that the body and the clothings and the praying place are free from any, any impurities. If there is any filth on the body or the garments or the praying area, you must make sure it is cleansed from all these impurities. If somebody prays with a garment while he knows that there is some filth in it, he needs to repeat that prayer. Okay, but if someone had some filth on his clothes and he does not know, 
until he had finished the prayer, his prayer is acceptable. He does not need to repeat the prayer, but he needs to cleanse his garment in order to pray the next prayer. Okay, so make sure that you understand this issue. If somebody has some filth on his body or his clothes and he prayed without knowing of that filth, his prayer is acceptable and he does not need to repeat it. But once he realized that there is filth in the, his body, if he realized that while praying and he can get rid of that piece of cloth without you know, exposing his, his, his private part or the, the, the level of body that he needs to cover, he can take it off. For instance, somebody is wearing a jacket and he realized that there was some filth on his sleeve and he forgot about that and he started his prayer. But once he started the prayer, he realized that he remembered that there is some filth. So he took off his jacket and he can continue his prayer in this case. But if the, if the uh, uh, filth was like uh, on his toe or his uh, trouser, okay? And uh, of course he cannot take it off because if he takes it off, his, you know, aura, his parts which he needs to cover while praying will be exposed. Therefore he cannot continue his prayer. So he needs to stop his prayer change his clothes and then starts all over again the prayer the third condition covering the aura wearing the correct clothing so for for a man he must cover his body between his navel and knees so the knees and the navel part should be covered uh, completely this is for males and it is highly recommended that he put something on his shoulder additionally like like a t-shirt or so or a shirt to cover his shoulder so this is the better uh, state in which he should be wearing in order to pray so he must cover his his, his body uh, until below the knees uh, his navel should be covered also shoulders later to be covered this is for the males while for the females uh, it is they, they must cover their entire body with something loose loose uh, garment only revealing the face and the two hands so this is the only parts should be revealed for women the two hands and the face uh, of course they cannot pray wearing tight clothes like like uh, tight trousers for instance uh, they need to be very careful about their prayer give them extra care so they must wear something loose like a garment which is loose and cover the entire uh, body except for the face and the two hands the fourth condition uh, is the time for the prayer must start for instance like we said dawn prayer starts specific time i cannot pray prior to that Dhuhr time starts specific time once the sun reaches the meridian and passes uh, slightly toward the west this is the beginning of Dhuhr time noon time I cannot pray before that. If I pray before that, I need to pray again and repeat that salah once the time starts. So if somebody prays prior to time, his salah is not acceptable and is still required to pray the salah on time. But if somebody misses the time of the salah, for instance, noon time completed and I did not pray noon time while forgetting. So once I remember, I pray immediately. Even if the Asr time starts, I pray immediately and I ask Allah for repentance. Now, of course, this is in the case of forgetting. But if somebody intentionally delays prayer until the time is finished, he is still required to pray. But this is counts as a makeup, but not praying on time. And he sins for intentionally delaying the Salah uh, until the end of time. In fact, he commits a major sin for delaying Salah until the time leaves so be careful not to delay the salah until the time of that salah uh, goes out because if you do so that person had committed a major sin and he needs to repent from such practice the uh, fifth condition facing the qibla meaning facing the kaaba direction so if you are in any place make sure you pray on time and you pray while facing the Kaaba 
And alhamdulillah, these days we have compasses to help us know the direction. We even have applications in our mobiles to help us know the direction of the Kaaba. So if you are in any place, just use your mobile or that compass to know the direction of the Kaaba and you pray toward the Kaaba. If you were traveling, for instance, and you have no mean to know where the Kaaba direction is, you do your best. You do your best and you pray. And even if you find out later on that you prayed to the wrong direction, you don't have to repeat that prayer. But if someone is traveling, for instance, and there were people around him in which he can ask about the direction, and he went on and he prayed. If he prayed to the wrong direction, here he is required to repeat that salah. Why? Because he could have asked people around him. But in the case, if there is no one around you, and you did your best, you strived hard to know the direction, and you, you prayed, even if you later on find out that the prayer was not to the right direction, not to the Kaaba, you don't have to repeat that prayer. But we do our best to always pray to the uh, Qibla direction while knowing. But we cannot, we cannot ignore you know, using the tools and asking people about the Kaaba direction without asking them or using that tools. We must make sure we are praying to the Kaaba direction. Unless we are in a place or a situation we cannot uh, find out there, we strive hard to find the direction. The sixth condition is intention. Like I said earlier, any act of worship, we are required to have an intention. Having an intention means that we attend in our heart, that I'm going to pray the Dhuhr prayer now, for instance. I'm going to pray the Asr prayer now. Not necessarily I have to utter any statements. Just in my heart, attend that I am going to pray Dhuhr time. This is an enough intention. In fact, it's not from the Sunnah to utter any intention. In fact, it is against the Sunnah. And the one sins for doing such a practice, to utter the intention, because he had never done such a thing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, nor his companions. So we are obliged to follow his footsteps in all the acts of worship, in all in what he had believed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on. So intention, again, is in the heart. We don't have to utter anything. Additionally, the book here mentions also, whenever we pray any prayer, it is a highly recommended that we pray, and we have a sutra. A sutra means something which is like almost half a meter high in front of us, uh, in which if somebody wants to pass it, he passes from around it, not between, before it, between us and that object. So that object must be like half a meter high. It could be a table, it could be uh, a box, could be a bag, could be if you're praying in the open area in front of your car or in front of a tree and you are praying there. So it is highly recommended to put something which is at least like almost uh, 50, 40 to 50 centimeters high. Okay. So why we do that? Because if somebody needs to pass, he pass beyond that, but not between us and that object. Because in this case, we are uh, obliged not to pass between people who are praying. We should pass beyond the prostration area that they are uh, using. And so this, these are the conditions uh, for prayer. Let us move to another topic before we get into the uh, how to pray. And this is the uh, uh, how, how many units every prayer have. In the case of Fajr prayer, which is the first, the first prayer, Fajr prayer, we have two units. And I'll explain to you how you perform every unit, inshallah ta'ala. In the, the next prayer is the Dhuhr prayer. We have four units. And the prayer after is the Asr prayer, and we have four units. And then we have the Maghrib, the sunset prayer, after sunset prayer, which is three units. And then finally, we have the Isha prayer, which is four units so this is the obligatory prayer of course we have optional and we have recommended prayers in which he used to perform sallallahu alaihi wasallam on peace be upon him uh, uh, on uh, of course once you do the obligatory act you you win the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even you win 
the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even greater if you perform the optional prayers that may come with those obligatory prayer or in addition to that. For instance, the Fajr prayer, the obligatory prayer of Fajr, we may pray two rak'ah prior to it. This is among the assigned optional prayer for every salah. In the case of Fajr, we have two rak'ah prior to it. In the case of Dhuhr, we may pray four rak'ah. Two rak'ah and then another two rak'ah. And then we pray the obligatory prayer. And then we may pray two rak'ah after the obligatory prayer. So this is additional like six rak'ah, six units, uh, which are optional. Of course, every rak'ah, every unit of prayer you perform, you are raising your lever before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're collecting reward all the way. In fact, salah is among the means you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more optional prayer you pray, you win the love of Allah azza wa jal. Uh, the, the Asr prayer has, has no, no like ratiba, which is recommended optional. But if you come earlier to Asr prayer, you may, you may pray four rak'ah, two and two. Okay, this is optional. For the Maghrib, we have uh, two rak'ah after the Maghrib, the obligatory Maghrib prayer. For the Isha, we have two rak'ah after the Isha prayer. So those are optional prayers which were uh, always performed by him, the Prophet meaning Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in addition to the obligatory prayer. He said, peace be upon him, whomever uh, continues praying the 12th rak'ah on a daily basis, Allah will build a house for him in, in Jannah. So imagine when you do such practice, you pray those additional optional prayer of the obligatory prayer, you are building for yourself a house in Jannah. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that Allah, the exalted himself, said, and the most beloved things with, with, with which my slaves come nearer to me is what I have enjoined upon him. And my slave keeps on coming closer to me through performing nawafil, prayer, or doing extra deeds besides what is obligatory till I love him. So this is the mean in which you win Allah's love, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the next issue is the invalidators uh, of prayer. Of course, when we are in a state of prayer, if we do some acts, they may invalidate your prayer. In this case, you need to repeat that prayer. So, uh, like we do know that the five prayers hold a significant role in our life. Uh, this is why uh, it, is, it is the firm bond between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are required to maintain it uh, in the best of manner that we can and we attend that we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is looking at us when we are praying so we do our best not to invalidate our salah with any acts uh, the first invalidator of course is what invalidates the ablution so if you do anything which invalidates the ablution like the excrete of air uh, and so on which we have covered in the issue of ablution also invalidates the prayer. So if somebody was praying and he excretes air, he had invalidated his prayer. He needs to make wudu again, ablution, and perform the prayer again. Secondly, laughing with sound. If somebody laughs and makes sound while laughing, his prayer is invalid. But if somebody, for some reason, smiled, his prayer is still valid. But again, we need to attend that we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to show a level of glorification, a high level of glorification to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid any uh, practice that may, you know, be against that. Thirdly, speaking whilst praying. We cannot speak while we are praying to people. If you are in prayer, you must only recite what you are required to recite in the prayer. The, the Quran that you recite, the remembrance that you recite, in ruku, in bowing, in prostration, you can do that. But to speak anything outside what you are required to say in Salah, that may invalidate the prayer. Uh, eating, fourth, eating or drinking. If somebody eats or drink, if somebody eats or drink, he had, uh, he will invalidate, of course, his prayer. He will invalidate his prayer. Five, uh, issue, the fifth issue is intentionally revealing the aura. If somebody intentionally shows his private part or the part of his body which is required to cover 
while in state of prayer. If he does that intentionally, he had invalidated his salah. But if that happens accidentally and he immediately covers his aura, his private part, he can continue this his salah in this case. But if it is revealed uh, in a sense where he needs to do uh, like action, gets out of salah or changes the direction of qibla, now here he needs to repeat the salah in this case. Praying to other than the qibla. If somebody prays uh, to, a qib to, to, uh, to a direction different from the qibla, here we say his salah his sala is invalid. If somebody, likes, like we said, if he starts praying, thinking that this is the qibla, and then somebody told him, you're praying to the wrong direction. If he shifts immediately to the right direction, or he helped him move to the right direction, he can continue his salah. But if somebody uh, prays intentionally to other than the qibla, his salah is invalid. He needs to repeat that salah. Also, if, like I said earlier, if he prays to a place where he thinks it's qibla, and he could have asked people around him, and he did not do that, and then he finds out after salah that he was praying, pray, praying to the wrong direction, we say to him, you need to repeat that salah. Because it is a must that we pray toward the Kaaba. Seventh uh, issue is praying whilst knowing that you have filth on the body or garments. Like I said earlier, if you pray while knowing that there is some filth on my garment, here I say uh, we must repeat that salah. Because we cannot perform salah while knowing that I have filth on my clothes or on my body. But if somebody, uh, while not knowing, he did not find out or he forgot, while praying that he had filth on his body. Here we say, uh, you're not required to repeat the salah in this case. Your salah is, is valid because you did not do it intentionally or while knowing. The eighth, to intentionally leave a pillar of the salah. The salah itself, like we'll get to learn, have pillars. Like standing while being able, it is a must and it is a pillar. You cannot play, pray while sitting if you are healthy. But if you are unhealthy and you have health problems standing, uh, Allah had exempted us from praying while standing. We can sit. But if somebody is in full health and he chose not to stand in prayer, and this is talking about the obligatory prayer, of course, uh, we say you, you must repeat the salah. But if he sits in the optional prayer, it is fine. But he gets only half of the reward for praying while sitting. Okay. Uh, so, for instance, reciting the first chapter of the Quran, it is a must. If somebody forgets, he needs to repeat that. He needs to repeat that. The ninth condition, to do many continuous actions or movements. So if somebody makes so, too much movements in Salah, this may invalidate his, his prayer. Uh, and he needs to make sure that he does not make any movements whatsoever. Unless there is an, uh, a, a necessity to do a, an act of movement, like to, to scratch, do it uh, in this uh, level, uh, this is fine. But try to do your best not to make any movements. Finally, to intentionally not pray in the right order. Salah has specific order. And we need to maintain that order. If somebody does not pray the Salah according to the order taught to us by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, here we need to repeat the, uh, the Salah because it is not valid. Uh, also, uh, some, some issues which are not disliked but does, does not invalidate our prayer. We need to avoid also, better to avoid. For instance, uh, to look to the sky. If somebody is praying and he looks to the sky. Uh, we say this is disliked to do such an act. You must look to the place of prostration. You should not uh, leave looking at that while you are in your salah okay or if somebody closes his eyes prays and he closes his eyes we say this is not from the sunnah it is dislike to continue your prayer while your eyes are closed uh, or to put your arms the entire arm on the ground like this this is uh, against the sunnah it is disliked but your salah is still bad because we are told to lift the arm from touching the ground we only put the palms on the ground while we are praying in this case so these are the issues of Salah, and inshallah ta'ala in coming Salah, we'll go over 
the how to how we go about performing the salah inshallah ta'ala and by this we will complete this book inshallah ta'ala barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khairan sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam